Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Fuel subsidy has always been a political uh, talking point in Nigeria. Last week, uh, Nigeria's state governors met and decided it's time to stop paying subsidies on petrol. A report of a committee headed by Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rufai said Nigeria spends 70 to 210 billion naira every month to keep petrol at 162 naira per litre. The pump price of petrol could uh, more than double to 385 naira per litre if subsidy goes. This morning we're speaking with a public affairs analyst, uh, Nick Agule, uh, to of course uh, quickly share with us. He has a lot of experience um, in the, these uh, conversations. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Agule. Good morning. Good morning. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. A lot of Nigerians aren't excited about this. There's mixed reactions, really. Some people say, well, um, it's better we do this now and, you know, bear the brunt than to continue deceiving ourselves. And then there's others who say this will just lead to total chaos because Nigerians cannot afford petrol at this price. Um, which side would you be on? Do you think it's high time that we take these steps and go ahead with it and let you know us suffer it for now and then get used to it? I would actually be on the side of... I think there's an echo. No, we, we can hear you clearly. Or is it go okay ahead. at your end? Yes, it is. Go ahead, please. Okay, fine. I will be on the side of removing subsidies yesterday. In fact, it should have been removed 10 or 20 years ago. So that is the side I am on. And the reason I am on that side is that those who say that subsidies, uh, when subsidies are removed, there will be some sort of Armageddon, have forgotten that subsidies on diesel and kerosene have long been removed and that Armageddon did not happen. Because if you look at uh, the productive sector, diesel is the fuel used in the productive sector. If you go to factories, you go to uh, other places, like even in our big generating sets that are used in factories or used in offices, they don't use petrol, they use diesel. If you look at uh, the big trucks that carry our goods about, the big buses, that transport people, those mass transit buses, they don't use petrol, they use diesel. If you look at kerosene, which is like fuel for the poor, there is no subsidy on it. So petrol is actually if the fuel that is used by the big men. Yeah, Mr. Agole, if you look at these long cannot... convoys yeah, can you hold of on? We, government we officials uh... or private individuals with their big SUVs, can you hear me, Mr. Agole? Petrol. Can so you hear if me? We are not subsidizing diesel, which is the fuel for the productive sector. We are not subsidizing kerosene, which is fuel for the poorest of the poor. Then this whole gamut of scaremongering. Uh, Mr. Gole, if you can hear me, kindly hold on. Fuel subsidies removed on petrol, the economy is going to suffer collapse. It's all propaganda that is fueled by those who are benefiting from this scam. All right, great. So, so this is where I want to quickly uh, step in here. Um, yes, you know, there is a great argument, you know, with the, the regards of stopping petrol subsidy um, because it will save Nigeria a lot of money, um, no doubt. But um, the, the, the ones you've mentioned, you know, the industries who have to depend on diesel, you know, and, you know, all of that, that has also, I believe, been one of the reasons for the high cost of goods and services that Nigerians have had to, you know, suffer for a long time. Same thing with kerosene. Yes, you know, a lot of people would argue that, you know, it's, it's petrol for the poor, but it doesn't mean that they're enjoying buying it at that price. It doesn't also mean that companies across Nigeria enjoy buying diesel at, you know, the price that they buy it. And that's why the cost of goods and services have continued to be pretty expensive. Don't you agree with that? And so do, do you think that we should then add um, more of this high cost of living and high cost of goods and services, high cost of, you know, existing basically in Nigeria uh, when we increase petrol prices to 385 naira a litre? 
So one thing is that this petrol price that government says is 385 Naira a liter is an anomaly. If you deregulate a sector as government is claiming they will do, then you don't regulate the price. For instance, the, the, the food sector is de deregulated. So government is not the one deciding how much we buy uh, a bag of rice or how much we buy a tuba of yam or how much we buy a kilogram of, of beef in the market. The prices are different. So if the government is truly, truly interested in deregulating, what they need to do is to open up the market. And what I mean open up the market is that whoever is able to import petrol and sell it, so long as they pass quality check by the government, let them sell their petrol at a price that will give them a profit. What that then means is that you don't expect petrol to sell at the same price all over the country. If you go to Katina State today, you will buy a cow at a far cheaper rate than you buy the cow in Lagos. So you cannot now insist that petrol should sell at the same price all over the country. And you now say it's a deregulated market. This is an anomaly. I can assure you, given the international prices of gasoline in the US and petrol here in the UK, where I am speaking to you right now, if Nigeria sincerely opens up the market, deregulates, and says whoever is able to import should import, pass quality check, and sell at their price, petrol will not sell for more than 100, 100 naira in Nigeria. I can assure you of that. And it does sound very good. Okay, so you're saying basically that rather than the, the you know, idea that Nigerians have that the regulation would make petrol price very expensive, you're saying basically this will create competition and make it cheap. Is that what you're saying? These prices that we have been paying and the government is talking about 385 now, these are prices that have a lot of inefficiencies inbuilt in. This is government importing petrol and setting a price and selling it. And we all know that there are a lot of inefficiencies in the bureaucracy of government. And we know that corruption is also embedded in the way government operates. So petrol is a business. The government should just hands off petrol and the government should allow the private sector to take care of this industry. Let me give you an example. If you put petrol in a vehicle, that vehicle is not going to move. Why? Because the vehicle needs engine oil and the vehicle also needs spare parts to be able to operate. And the government is not subsidizing engine oil the government is not setting the prices of engine oil, and people are buying engine oil, and they are using it to lubricate their vehicles. So what is this big deal about petrol that government will not let go? All right. Government has to let go of petrol just like they have let go of diesel, and I can assure you that petrol will sell for not more than 100 naira. I can give right. you the data. L l l let me, Here let me in the UK quickly. where I am speaking with you, a liter of petrol cost one pound twenty-five, but in that one pound twenty-five, forty percent is duty, and twenty percent is VAT. So the taxation is sixty percent. So if you take out that sixty percent, it means uh, the petrol costs seventy-five pence, and at seventy-five pence, given our exchange rate today of five thirty-five. That petrol will cost just 401 naira. But then that is the UK, where the minimum wage is a thousand pounds a month. In Nigeria, minimum wage is 30,000. So I can assure you that if this petrol is allowed to come to Nigeria by importers, 
they will sell it for not more than a hundred naira. Um, so I wanted to just, you know, yes. quickly mention, how would you respond to those who say, well, you know, like you've mentioned, uh, uh, diesel has been deregulated, um, kerosene has been deregulated, but it hasn't in any way brought the prices down, you know, like, you know, you've, you know you're expecting for petrol. Uh, what would your response be to that? Well, the government is still involved. The government is still sitting on the downstream sector of the petroleum industry. What is needed is for the government to give way. The government should only be a regulator and the government should allow private enterprise to superintend over this sector. This government does not bother about how much we buy drugs. Importers are importing drugs and selling it at a price that gives them a profit. And I can, have, and I can, I can see that drugs or medicines are more important to us than even petrol. The government is not interested in how much we buy food. The government is not interested in how we buy clothing. You know, government has deregulated education, for instance. So for a start, the government can say, let whoever is able to import you import and say side by side with government so that consumers have a choice to drive into a petrol station and buy at a price. Why should the government be insistent that a particular product in Nigeria should sell at a particular price? It's an anomaly. It doesn't make economic sense. It's only giving room for corruption. In the UK, where I'm speaking to you now, there can be two petrol stations that are opposite each other, and they have different prices. And consumers are making their, making up their mind as to to where to, to drive in and buy. For instance, I can, I can give you an example. If you look at the Ikoi or Victoria Island equivalent of the UK, the petrol prices in those areas are higher than what you can find in Mushin or Ojo Elegba. These are businessmen making their decisions, selling petrol at higher prices in the affluent areas and selling it at lower prices in the less affluent areas, it's all about business. So when you have competition, you now see that, I mean, we, we have examples. Let us look at the, uh, the telecoms. I like telecoms because it's such a very good example of how the business sector can do things for us. Mr. Mr. When MTN, yes. Yes, um, you've shared this example with us many times, and we do understand the import of why deregulation is important. But in a country like Nigeria, where you know we have this issue with corruption, and you mentioned that you know the government should deregulate, let private individuals go ahead and you know put at whatever price tag they have. In other countries like Malaysia, Canada, we know that when they had their full deregulation of you know their 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 oil sector. They established laws. Also, there were bodies that were constituted to make sure to monitor and ensure that you know um, suppliers and marketers were not selling above a certain price. But talking about the corruption factor in Nigeria, how can we ensure? How can the government ensure that marketers, independent you know uh, businessmen, would not be exploiting the public? Well, two things there. The first is that competition helps the consumer because the businessmen are fighting for market share. And then secondly, government regulation can come in. MTN were alone and they were selling their starter pack at 50,000 Naira. I was in Nigeria, I was working in, in Warri when MTN started. 50,000 Naira was what MTN were selling starter pack. How much is a SIM card today? It's almost so free. Today they will almost beg you to come and take a, a SIM card, why? because competition has eaten up that profit. That's in economics, you call that super profit. So those who come into the industry initially, they start making a lot of profit and then other businesses, businessmen see them making money, they now come into that sector. Okay. And once they come into that sector, they keep crashing their prices so that they can attract uh, customers until customers now start paying efficient prices. Okay. So if, gov if government allows a deregulation and, and, and businessmen to come into the sector with their money, they will crash prices. The second one is regulation. Currently, as set up, 
The government has the Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Authority. This authority is the one that sets prices and says petrol will sell at 170 or now they are saying 385. That's just their work to set the prices. How they determine the prices, we don't know. They have a template, but is it transparent? And now you're talking about they are subsidizing 93 million liters of petrol consumption every day in Nigeria. Whereas we know that this petrol is just going across the borders. So if you let businessmen come in, all of these inefficiencies will be eliminated. And okay. then government sets up, uh, sets up a body, an agency that is called Petroleum Equalization Fund, PEF. The only duty of this agency is to ensure that petrol sells at the same price all over Nigeria. Petrol is the only, only product in Nigeria that enjoys this type of regulatory agencies around it. How can you insist that a product must sell at the same price all over the country? If you, if you buy yams in Benue, they will be cheaper than if you buy yams in Lagos. And all the right. government is not bothered about that. So why is the government bothered about petrol that petrol must sell at the same price all over the country. But Mr. Agule, I just wanted to us to emphasize a point you made earlier, you know, talking about deregulation. Uh, you're basically saying that for the first few years of deregulation, petrol will be very expensive, fuel will be very expensive for Nigeria to buy. Because we know this is a capital intensive business and not every businessman will be able to just quickly, you know, swoop in and, be, and begin to make investment in, you know, in, in the sector. So basically you're saying in the first few years, we're going to bear the brunt of paying heavily for fuel before, you know, it will get worse before it gets better, basically, right? Yes. So if Nigerians have to bear the brunt before it gets better, let's just bear the brunt. Sometimes you have to endure the pain of injection to be able to get work. Because what you, you get the statistics. 200 billion monthly is being spent on subsidy. Imagine that money going into agriculture, going into education, going into healthcare, going into repairing our roads. And we are putting this money in, in a can that we cannot even look in and determine where it is going. We already know that there's heavy corruption in this uh, fuel subsidy uh, sector. So let Nigerians endure the pain, knowing that tomorrow will be better. But I can wow. assure you of one thing. It's not going to take years for the prices to correct. Okay. Why? Because importation of petrol is simpler. You don't, they, are, they are not setting up refineries. They are just going to the market to buy and bring in. So within a few months, I can assure you, the prices are going to correct. Because importers, we go to the open market, the open uh, market, international market, they will buy these products, bring them into, into Nigeria, clear them at the port. Already, there are tank farms, there are tank farms in Nigeria where, you know, these products can be processed and then they can be distributed all over the country. You will not, you, let us not underestimate the extent to which businessmen can go to make all money. Right. Mr. Gole, um, day and day by night, they will put all the facilities in place, and I can assure you that in six months or less, the prices will correct. Uh, there's also, you know, of course, uh, it's also, you know, maybe was something we will talk about on a later date. How Nigeria is consuming 93 million liters daily, we, and a couple of years ago it was just 30 million. How did we jump to 93? Um, but let's, you know, uh, talk about the conversation on uh, refineries. Um, you know, how much will that also change? Uh, do we still, of course, bother with fixing any of the refineries if we're talking about deregulation? Um, and if we go ahead with that, you know, would that Sorry, also be... I think the, the, the line has... Uh, the line, you asked a question about refineries or yes, so. The line I'm, has uh, actually uh, gone bad again. Can you hear me now? Okay, a bit, yes. So I'm, so, I'm asking if we should still bother going ahead with fixing refineries... Um, or we should just let that go and focus on full deregulation. Okay, if I can hear you, were you asking whether we should still go ahead with uh, repairing the refineries 
or just uh, continue with the regulation. Already, I am not in support of the government repairing the refinery. I would prefer the government to sell the refinery and let those who buy the refinery repair the refinery and then refine. Why would you go and repair a refinery to sell? It doesn't make sense. I mean, we know very well that the government is not efficient in the way they do their things. So they shouldn't repair the refinery. So basically what I expect the government to do is this. In the short term, the government should allow full deregulation for people to import and sell. In the medium and long term, government should sell off all the four refineries in Nigeria so that investors will repair these refineries and then they start doing local refining. By the time we now have sufficient local refining, government should then impose duty on imported petrol so that whoever is importing will now experience higher prices to allow the local refiners the market to be able to sell. This is what is obtainable anywhere else in the world. Mm. We understand the benefits of the regulation like you've explained to us. But how about the hurdles, you know, the challenges to achieving full deregulation in Nigeria? The first hurdle is that the government of uh, Nigeria needs to show sincerity to Nigerians to convince Nigerians that deregulation is the way to go. Because a lot of uh, miscommunication and scaremongering has been, there's, a, there's an orchestrated campaign by those who are benefiting from this subsidy scam. Uh, anytime government wants to, to, to remove subsidies or deregulate, these people fund all sorts of interest groups in Nigeria to come out and campaign against it. So government should show sincerity to Nigerians and take the bulls by the horns. One thing I will, I, will, I will expect government to do to assuage the fears of Nigerians is that government should allow the private sector to participate in the downstream alongside the government. There are many other sectors that government is doing this parallel run with the private sector, like even in media. Government has its own media houses, and today I'm speaking on a private media house. So government should let people start buying petrol, importing petrol and selling at their own prices. This whole issue of government setting a price that this is the price that petrol must be sold should not be stopped. So that as importers are coming in, initially the prices that will be sold in the private petrol stations will be higher than that of government. But with time, the private uh, super profits will now be eaten up by competition and then gradually Nigerians will start seeing the prices drop and then they will now start driving into those private sector stations to buy. And with time, then there will be no need for government to even get involved by importing. So if government doesn't want to walk away outrightly, then government should allow parallel run so that people can have a choice of buying at 250 in a private station or buying at 180 in a government station or whatever. And I can assure you that consumers will make their own decisions and choices depending on well, what they find and what they see. All right. Nick Agule, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. Interesting conversation. Uh, we hope to speak with you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Mm. Always. And of course, uh, coming up next, uh, we are moving to discussions around the South where Sunday Boho and his call for secession and the response by APC leaders uh, um, here in Nigeria saying no to secession, but yes to the ban on open grazing. We'll get into that conversation right next. <laughs>